In this video, we're going to discuss cellular reproduction, specifically mitosis and the phases of mitosis. In the previous video, we discussed the cell cycle. We discussed the different parts of interphase, and then we mentioned the steps of mitosis. In this video, we're going to go into detail on the steps of mitosis. We mentioned that every cell that's a eukaryote is going to have a nucleus that is going to house the genetic material inside the cell. So inside the nucleus, which is bound by a nuclear membrane, we're going to have DNA, linear strands of chromosomes all throughout the nucleus. It's also going to have inside of it a nucleolus. So we can see here's our nuclear membrane on this pretend cell with our linear chromosomes housed inside the nucleus. Those chromosomes we discussed, DNA was very long material, about six feet long when we put it all together. And we need to compact that into a teeny tiny nucleus inside of a teeny tiny cell that you can't see with the naked eye. So to do that, we need to compact it very tightly. So we take the DNA and we wrapped it around the histone proteins, and then we wrap those together, and we wrap those together, and we wrap those together, and they condense into a chromosome. So we talked about how eukaryotic cells are going to have chromosomes, and if we were humans, we have 23 sets of chromosomes. We're going to have some from mom and some from dad. Humans are going to have 23. That would come from mom and another 23 that you inherit from dad and his genetic information. For a total of 46 linear chromosomes. So in the cell cycle, we mentioned that 90% of the time a cell is in interphase, but then when it gets ready to undergo mitosis, it starts the different phases of interphase. So it'll move out of G0 into G1, where the cell starts to get larger, cytoplasm grows, RNA starts to duplicate. Then it will get into the S phase of interphase, and that's when DNA synthesis occurs. DNA synthesis is taking one of your chromosomes one of your DNA strands, and the DNA is going to meet at the origin. It's going to unzip, and it is going to start to replicate itself. So that one chromosome at the end of synthesis will now have a carbon copy of itself. And these two together, again, were called sister chromatids. And they're attached in this central region right here called the centromere. So every linear chromosome is going to duplicate itself at the S phase of interphase. And instead of having 46 chromosomes, normally we're going to end up having 92 during the S phase of interphase by the end of it. Then we move on to the G2 phase where we make sure that we have everything we need before we go into steps of mitosis. Everything is double. We have more cytoplasm. We have more proteins. We have more organelles. Our DNA is duplicated. Everything is ready as we step into phases of mitosis. Another thing that we need to discuss in mitosis is an organelle, the centrosome. So the centrosome, we're going to have these structures here called centrioles. And the centrioles are going to be very important because they are going to release these little guys right here called spindle fibers, mitotic spindle fibers. And these spindle fibers are going to attach onto our sister chromatids. They are going to attach onto the citrochromatids at a place in the centromere called a kinetochore, which we'll see in a different image coming up. But those centrosomes are going to release spindle fibers, and those things are going to move around the chromosomes and shift them from place to place. So the steps of mitosis, also called karyokinesis, in general are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. There's a step in between prophase and metaphase, which is called prometaphase. And telophase uh, and cytokinesis, I tend to lump together as they happen at similar times in the stages of mitosis. So our very first stage, as we come out of interphase, and we can see cells in interphase in this whitefish blastula slide on our light microscope, 
these cells are an interphase and they are a solid ball in the interphase. The nuclear membrane is intact um, and it looks just like a regular old cell in interphase. As we enter prophase, prophase is the very first step of mitosis, and during prophase, that nuclear membrane that surrounds the nucleus is going to break down. This guy is going to break down and we are going to see the chromosomes inside. The chromosomes are going to condense, become very compact and tight, and they will be visible. Another thing that happens is the nucleolus, that was this nice ball of RNA inside, that also disappears during this phase. So during prophase, nuclear membrane breaks down, the nucleolus is going to break down, we're going to see our chromosomes that are nice and condensed, and spindle fibers are going to start to form coming from the centromeres on the poles of the cell. So over here on this slide, we'll be able to see spindle fibers that fluoresce in this green color. We're going to see the genetic material that is going to fluoresce in blue on these images coming up. So the step in between prophase and metaphase is called prometaphase. So during prometaphase, those chromosomes are going to continue to condense. We're going to be able to see them. They're going to get nice and tight and compact. The spindle fibers coming off of those chromos uh, off of those microtubules coming and connecting to the kinetochore. So here's the centromere region where our sisters are attached. And those little spindle fibers are going to attach onto the kinetochore, which is a section inside the centromere where the spindle fibers are going to attach. And they are coming from the centrosomes, and the centrosomes have moved towards the poles. They are now at opposite ends. So this is pro-metaphase. Let's move on to metaphase. In metaphase, metaphase starts with an M, and it's one of my favorite phases of mitosis to try and diagnose because in metaphase, the chromosomes line up in the middle. You can call it the middle of this enlarged cell, maybe the equator. The textbook for OpenStax likes to call it the metaphase plate. It is in the middle of the enlarged cell. You can see this genetic material lining up in the middle. So metaphase starts with an M, chromosomes are lined up in the middle. So here we have our sisters, they are lined up in the middle of this cell right here. Here's our wonderful fluorescent cell, and if we drew a, metaphysical, a metaphase plate in the middle, we could see all of that genetic material lined up in the middle. All of these nice green spindle fibers attached to the sister chromatids and they are going to start bringing them towards the poles in our next phase. So in metaphase, everything was in the middle. Anaphase starts with an A and that helps me remember that anaphase, the sisters are pulled apart. They're pulled apart. So those spindle fibers are going to start contracting and pulling the genetic information towards the poles, away from each other, and towards the opposite ends. So each of these sister chromatids have been split up in anaphase. Sisters are moved apart. The individual chromosomes are heading towards opposite poles. And the cell is going to continue to elongate. If you're looking at the whitefish blastula slides in your light microscope and you see a gap between the genetic information, if they, it looks like they were in the middle, but now there's a space there, that's anaphase, where the sisters were pulled apart in anaphase and they're heading towards opposite poles. Telophase and cytokinesis are our last steps. So if prophase broke down the nuclear membrane, telophase is the phase where the nuclear membrane has to come back. So our chromosomes have moved to opposite sides of this cell. They've moved to the opposite poles. 
the spindle fibers that move them around from the middle and then pull them apart are now breaking down and those chromosomes are starting to expand. They're not quite as condensed anymore and they are going to be surrounded by the nuclear envelope. So we broke it down in prophase and we build it back up in telophase. So here is our picture of telophase on our whitefish blastulocytes. Here's our genetic material. It's pulled apart. It's starting to form a membrane around the edges. And we can see another structure here where the cell is pinching in, forming a cleavage furrow. Over here on our lovely fluorescent cell, all of this blue genetic material is now pulled towards the opposite poles. And we're going to start forming our nuclear membrane back. Cytokinesis means splitting of the cytoplasm. So in telophase, we covered up the genetic material with our nuclear membrane. We dissolved the spindle fibers that were pulling them around because now they are at the opposite poles where they need to be. And all we need to do is separate the cytoplasm and build our cell membranes and our cell walls. So in the animal cells, we talked about how you could see a cleavage furrow pinching in. So this is gonna be actin that's gonna form a little ring and cause the sides of the animal cell to pinch in. And that pinch in is called a cleavage furrow, a cleavage furrow. And eventually, it's going to split the cytoplasm with cytokinesis, and we are going to end up with two separate daughter cells. And these daughter cells are identical in every way. They're going to have the same organelles. They're going to have the same DNA. They are identical, these two daughter cells. So this was animal cells. Plant cells are very similar. Um, instead of having the metaphase plate formed with actin, these guys are going to form a cell plate. So the cell plate is going to separate the two cells. It will then form into the cell walls because remember plant cells also have a cell wall in addition to their cell membrane. And we have two daughter cells for the plant cells as well. So our unicellular prokaryotes, they need to replicate too. So one of their first steps is to replicate the DNA, just like in our eukaryotes. So they're going to have an origin of replication where the DNA is going to split and unwind, and then we are going to copy the DNA. So remember, prokaryotes had circular DNA, so their DNA is going to form and replicate and form two circles as it copies itself and makes two carbon copies of the DNA. There's also going to be these proteins floating around, these FT, FTSZ proteins, and those guys are going to start to migrate towards the middle. They are going to start to form a ring, just like we talked about in the animal cells with actin is going to form a ring, and it's going to start to pinch in the cell. Our genetic material has shifted, and now we have both copies of them in opposite sides. They've moved towards the poles. And now our FTSZ ring is closing. It's going to form a septum or a wall between the cells. And eventually we end up with two daughter cells that are again, genetically identical. Everything in this cell is the same as what is in that cell. So to summarize, 90% of the time, a cell is an interface, but then it starts to perform the steps to get ready for mitosis. So in mitosis, we have prophase, we have prometaphase, metaphase in the middle, anaphase where they pull apart, and telophase where everything starts to come back together, and we have cytokinesis, splitting of the cytoplasm, where we have two daughter cells. So down here is another one talking about DNA synthesis happens in the S phase, that we are going to have sister chromatids that line up during metaphase. And then at the end, we're going to have two daughter cells. They will be diploid. Again, diploid means they'll have the full set of chromosomes. So we'll have 46 and 46. And these will be identical daughter cells.